Today's video is going to be on speaker placement. Now, excuse the video, it looks a little bit amateur and uh, childish, but I'm going to try to do this on the iPad. But I think this should work and this should be the best way to present this topic. The topic is speaker placement. The um, importance of speaker placement is the difference between two 18 inch subs producing chest pounding bass or producing a nightmare scenario where you're walking around and one part of the room sounds okay, another part of the room you can't even hear the bass. And it, this is the easily the, the first place that most people to, who run live sound, bands, DJs, whatever, screw up and end up purchasing unnecessary amounts of speakers and amps and just pulling their hair out and driving them way too hard because they just can't get good even sound and especially bass response throughout the room. I'm going to wipe the screen here. So say we got a traditional setup which is two mains and two 18 inch subs. That setup. So we got, we're in a room. So say this is our club. And the band or DJ is right here. And the traditional setup is you put one side of set of speakers here, one set of speakers here. Now this is causing a few problems. You're going to get a ton of bass up here. You're going to get some down here and some down here. And this is called Power Alley. This right here. And you're going to get... Let me see if I can change the color here. Here, and the red spots, you're going to get almost no bass. And that's because of comb filtering. And you can look that up on the internet if you want to get more in-depth. Basically, this speaker, this speaker, the waves coming from there work against each other and create blackout spots where there's no bass and create amplified, really powerful spots like Power Alley here and drive you nuts and you're not getting these speakers are working against each other you're not going to get the most output and also the other thing you got to look at is here is boundary can cancellation and basically within eight feet of a wall you're going to cancel out a frequency so it could be 80 hertz which is a really important frequency when it comes to subwoofers let me clear this out so now let's say First thing, the concept is where to place the speakers as far as output goes. Not We're going to do just a single speaker at this point. So we get a single speaker, and again, we're in our room here. Of course, you always want to put the speaker on the floor, subwoofer. Anything else is fine, although if you don't have any subwoofers and you just have, say, a 215 and a horn, you want to put that on the floor. When you put it on the floor, you gain three decibels of output which is almost effectively doubling the bass output so you get the one speaker you put it on the floor you're already doubling the amount of output just putting on the floor so you don't want to put it up on a stage you don't want to lift it off the ground on a stand or something a subwoofer or if, like I said if your main is you don't have any subs and you just have a 215 and a horn you want to put it on the floor if you have a 15 and a horn you're not gonna have a lot of bass output anyways at that point you could probably put it on a stand and just live with it and and add a sub but if you have any kind of system capable of bass output you want to put it on the floor the second thing is again we got boundary cancellation and how boundary cancellation is it basically works from zero to eight feet so if it's past eight feet so if we put our speaker here we're fine we're not going to have any cancellation so you put it on the floor it's about eight feet away from the wall eight feet away from this wall of course eight feet we're in good shape we're not going to cancel out any frequencies we're going to be in good shape there but if you have to go by a wall you want to have it within one foot of the wall so you want to put it up against the wall or as close as possible now here's the tricky part with that so let me wipe this again so we're in the room say we set up right here one thing we could do is put speakers here because what happens is we gain three decibels 
on the floor, but then we couple it with the wall, we gain an extra three decibels, which is six total. Now it's over doubling the output of that single subwoofer. So if you have 118, you put it against the wall, you put it against the floor, you just really boosted the output of that speaker. Now here's another concept. Put it back here. Point it against the wall right here. So we get three decibels here. We get three decibels on the floor. And we get three decibels against this wall. With a nine decibel increase. That's called corner loading. It's not something you necessarily want to do all the time, but if you're in a really, really big location and you have a really, really underpowered system, now you almost tripled your output, over tripled your output. A nine decibel increase in sensitivity by just doing that, and that's called corner loading. So, now that we learned all our concepts, now let's get to business. So we get into a club, and the club looks like this. And, uh... The stage is right here. All right, let me change colors here. Now, say just for the sake of argument, this is a DJ setup. So you come into the club and the stage is right here. What do you want to do with the sound system? You got two options. Traditionally, what, what people would do is put one here and one here on stage, set up the DJ thing, and it would be terrible. And they'd complain that, boy, my system, I just need a bigger system, I need more power, I don't get the bass I want. So, we that's not what we want to do. So, let's see if I can erase this without making too much of a mess. Okay, we take the same setup. Now, we got a couple options here. One is, what I do a lot, is I stack everything together here. So, I got 18s on the floor. And then I stack the mains on top, <clears throat> making sure to have eight feet apart from there, eight feet apart from here, and then of course you got the stage, so you got plenty. And then this gives a nice even sound. It doesn't look awesome like you got the big stereo stacks on each side, but it's going to sound ten times better. And I get so many compliments on how good it sounds. So that's one thing you could do. And, that, and that's what you want to do if you have plenty of power and you're not concerned about anything else. Now, say you're in the same place and it's much larger. You're here. Change the color here. Okay, DJ setup here. And say you have just uh, an underpowered system. This is a huge place. What you could do is put everything here and put your sub you could either, you can try to fire it against the wall or just put it up against the wall. And now you're adding three more decibels because you're against the wall. And then, of course, you want to put all your speakers there. You don't want to put any on the other side and start comb filtering. But that's the second way you could handle this room going into this room. And then it goes on. I mean, we could do one more example. We could go into, say, this is a typical hall, a club. They got a stage right here. And this is a band setup, say, or a DJ. But say for band setup, you got you know you got your guys up here, your all your band stuff. So you're up on a stage. You're off the ground. What you want to do is you can do this a couple different ways. If you just have two subs and they don't hang up too much higher, you could put both subs here and then put a main here and a main here or you could the other way you could do it is get this all up here again you could either you could stack your speakers here or over here one of the sides again maintaining the eight feet from the wall or going against the wall and again, against the wall, it's going to give you your decibel increase if you need it. But it's always better to stay away from the wall if you can. So that's uh, some complex things to think about with speaker placement. And you got some concepts here. you got comb filtering, boundary cancellation, 
and you got corner loading so you can look those items up in Google and read in depth the technical explanations of why you do all those and they'll show diagrams and demonstrations of, of how they affect your sound but this should give you a good overview if you, you ha have no background in it and right away these concepts of where to place the speakers put them together keeping them away from a wall or putting them against the wall can really help a smaller system or any system sound way better and more even. Try it your next show and if you don't like it you can always go back but I believe you're gonna find that your sounds a lot more even in a room and you won't have to turn up quite as loud because you won't have you know your typical power alley and then your bass here so you're killing somebody here the person here can't hear anything well, can't can hear it, but it's much, much lower. So you're turning it up for him, and you're killing these people here. So give it a try, and I believe you're really going to like it.